I'm a girl. <laughs> I'm an artist. And I'm good at math. My dad, a chemical engineer, and my mom, a model, made me feel like I could do anything. And they certainly never gave me a t-shirt like this. One with a message about all the subjects that girls can be good at. Shopping, music, dancing. But math is left unchecked. Hey, nobody's perfect, right? That's what it says on the t-shirt. I think Rebecca Stanton's Facebook quote says it all. Stop making it fashionable for girls to be dumb. <laughs> After loads of complaints, a children's place, a children's place pulled this t-shirt from their stores. But why make the shirt to begin with? Why not make a shirt that empowers girls? It looked even worse when compared to the ones that they were selling for boys, about the awesome superhero putting himself out there, making things happen, the boy genius. But hey, I'm all about boys and boy power, but what about the girls? The fact is, research shows that children express the stereotype that math is for boys, not for girls, as early as second grade. And girls are less likely than boys to pursue math in higher education or careers. But when I was a kid, I was good at math. I guess because nobody ever made me feel like I couldn't be. I competed in creative problem-solving competitions like the Odyssey of the Mind, where I got to build cars powered by mouse traps. <laughs> and I was one of three girls in the advanced placement math classes at school. I didn't pursue a career in math, but I certainly didn't feel like I couldn't if I wanted to. Instead, I pursued a career in the arts. From a very early age, I knew that I wanted to be an animator, somebody that makes their drawings move. My mom said that when I was two years old, we went to the zoo and we came back, and I said, show me how to draw an elephant. I really wanted to draw it, and my mom was like, Jennifer, I, I don't know how to draw, and she didn't even try, she didn't show me. And she said I was so frustrated that I couldn't draw this elephant that I picked up the entire box of crayons and threw them at her. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, whoa. And she said that in that moment, she knew I was gonna be an artist. <laughs> When I was a bit older, I was all about Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Charlie Brown's never give up attitude was a huge inspiration to me. I've had success, but I've definitely had my fair share of falls, just like Charlie Brown. On Sundays, I would cut the comics from the newspaper and paste them into my notebook. I wanted to draw those characters. I wanted to make up my own stories. It was so empowering as a kid to be able to draw the characters that I loved. And the genius behind the Charles Schultz cartoons is their simplicity. Charlie Brown is just made up of a bunch of shapes. A circle head, squiggly lines for a face, trapezoid for a body, lots of horizontal and vertical lines. It's really just a lot of math. When I was about seven, I drew this comic, and right around that time, I saw the Charlie Brown Christmas special on TV for the first time, and I was like, whoa, you can make your drawings move? Huge light bulb went on in my head. I ran up and I told my mother, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make my drawings move for a living, just like Charlie Brown. And what's amazing is, my mom actually believed me. I feel like so many kids today don't get the encouragement that they need to reach for their dreams. I consider myself really lucky. But I definitely struggled at first to find my voice as an artist. I thought I wanted to go down that big animation studio path, so I struggled and pushed to get my drawing skills up to snuff. But soon I realized that my drawings are just quirky little doodles polished and unfinished, rough. And it was that type of style that really appealed to me as a kid, 
So that's what I should be doing. I shouldn't try and be somebody that I'm not. If I give any advice during this talk today, it would be to really, really, really know yourself. Know what you're good at. Know what you're not good at. And surround yourself with people who are good at that. Know what makes you happy, know what you're good at, and go for it, even if it's the path less taken. That's the type of freedom that I hope for boys, girls, for everybody. Everything that I create starts with materials that a kid has access to. Paper, paint, cardboard, sippy straws. I take a handcrafted approach to animation, kind of like what the slow food movement is doing for cooking. You know, you cut your food, you savor it, you take the time, but I'm trying to do that for animation. And all the characters that I design are simple enough for a kid to draw. For me, it's the ultimate form of praise when a kid is so inspired by your drawings that they want to draw them themselves. I also go out of my way to create strong female characters that both girls and boys will relate to. That's been a passion of mine. Characters like Lenny the guinea pig from The Wonder Pets. <laughs> the leader of a trio of classroom pets that save animals in distress while singing opera. <laughs> and so both boys and girls would relate to Linny and feel like they could also be the leader. We decided not to call out if she was a boy or a girl. We decided to make her gender neutral. And here's a short film that I created with my brother for Sesame Street. It shows a kid building an elaborate Rube Goldberg machine all out of toys. And it was super important to me that this kid be a girl. I wanted to show her building with confidence, showing her powerful engineering skills. In the film, she has a music box that's stuck. Here is what she builds to open it. <laughs> And here's my latest creation. A while back, PBS Kids asked me to create a math show for kids. To be completely honest with you, I never thought that I would be the creator of a math show. But when I got the call, I was like, yes, this is so perfect for me. I love math. And how awesome to be able to show kids, especially girls, that math is cool. It's not just for boys or people who are born with innate math skills. I wanted to design a world that looked and felt like math. So I painted on graph paper, and I used things like infinity symbols as clouds, and I put in higher advanced uh, math symbols like equals mc squared. And I teamed up with writer Billy Aronson, and together we created Peg Plus Cat. The idea behind our show is math is everywhere. It's not just numbers and equations. You do math when you clean your room. There's math in sorting. There's math in music. In this story, Peg and Cat help Beethoven compose his fifth symphony with patterns. Short, 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 long. <laughs> and we even show that you can measure in non-standard units. Like in one story, Peg measures all the way to the buried treasure in Cat. <laughs> And there's even math in potty training, seriously. First, you listen to your body. Second, you tell an adult or a friend that you have to go, and you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> and there's math in trick-or-treating. Check it out.
<laughs> Peg's the hero of our show. She's a feisty little girl who's good at math. She's as chatty as a penny cartoon, as whip-smart and fearless as Tatum O'Neill's character in Paper Moon, and at times she gets as hilariously nervous as Woody Allen. All three of these equal Peg. In every story, Peg and her sidekick, Cat, are thrust into the middle of a wacky word problem that has to be solved, and fast. In this story, a cat opens the door to the chicken coop and lets out 100 chickens, and they have to figure out how to get all the chickens back into the coop before the farmer sees. And only by using math can they solve the problem. It always involves brainstorming, writing things out, singing, tripping on stuff. And when Peg is on the brink of disaster, she totally freaks out. Those chickens will keep running wild and going crazy forever and ever and ever, and I am totally freaking out. <laughs> Early on, we got a note from research wondering if it's OK to show a girl freaking out because she can't solve a math problem. Does that just perpetuate the stereotype that math is for boys? We thought about it, but then we decided, no. Peg freaks out just like anybody would, boy or girl. Then she takes a deep breath, and she counts backwards from five. Five, four, three, two, one. And in that moment of pause, she sees something that triggers a solution, and she solves the problem. The one thing about that t-shirt that I showed at the beginning of this talk that I do agree with is nobody's perfect. When you're creating a strong character, male or female, they can't be perfect. It's just not believable. But how about a t-shirt more like this? One that shows girls math is cool, and very much so in fashion. Thank you. <laughs>